All right, welcome to the Good Rookies Podcast. My name is Fahim. And my name is Nelly J, y'all. And we are Good Rookies. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> What's going on, everybody? Happy Good Tuesday. And guess what? It's episode 65. 65. 65, y'all. This is crazy. 65 straight weeks. Fahim, bro, we have been grinding, grinding, grinding. And we're so, I'm so excited because we have my brother on the podcast today. I don't think he needs an introduction, but Fahim, please introduce who we got. All right. So we have a professional in the house. Someone's going to add some context to the conversation. Uh, he's uh, been here before and podcast family and real family in real life mm-hmm. let's walk in welcome yes, yes. dr ben igwe to the podcast today ben ben ben, 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 ben 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 how you doing how you doing thank you for inviting ben, ben. me again <laughs> <laughs> of course join join nelly j and fahim on good rookies <laughs> oh man we're we're happy i'm good for him how you doing bro <laughs> Yeah, I can't complain. Everything's blessed. <laughs> Yo, Ben, so so happy to have you on. One year later, I for real, I think it's like a year later um, today. And for me, you know, you're always someone I've looked up to, you know, you're, you're Kobe's like brother, I swear to you. Like, I'm always like, Kobe and Ben were like so similar, for real. But one thing, you know, speaking of Kobe and the Lakers, you know, you really were a Laker fan. And are you still a Laker fan? Are you still a big Laker fan today? I'm still a Laker fan. Okay, you know, okay. I was always more of a Kobe fan than a Laker fan. So as Kobe rolled, I rolled. Okay. But yes, I, I'm still I'm still rolling with the Lakers. So okay. Especially okay. now, I, I, I like Russell Westbrook a lot. You know, I like the energy he brings. You know, sometimes it can be a little ra- erratic how he uses this energy, but um, definitely like how he plays. So definitely enjoying watching the Lakers. I understand the logic behind following the player that you like because a lot of people are like that with LeBron. I remember when LeBron left Cleveland and he went to Miami and all of a sudden everyone was a Miami Heat fan. Yep. Then he went back to Cleveland. So <laughs> I, I, I get the logic. At least you stuck with your team. Yeah. So I rate yeah. that. Yeah, it, it's crazy because most Laker fans are, aren't happy with the Westbrook uh, pickup, but you're probably the one of the few that I know that's actually excited and want to give him a fair chance. So Kudos to you, Ben, because that's really yeah. rare um, amongst the Laker fans. Um, so speaking of the Lakers, I wanted to ask you because, you know, LeBron is reaching, you know, they call him old man, old man <laughs> life, right? And we, we've all passed that. All of us have passed old man life. And so at this point, you know, he had the injury last year. Then he had, I think, an ankle injury earlier this season. Now he has an abdominal strain or whatever. Now, it was reported that he'll be gone for two weeks. Now we're hearing... It could be up to six to eight weeks. So, Ben, please break down, Dr. B, why this strain can go from two weeks out, all of a sudden it is now eight weeks, bro. I think it really depends on a couple of factors. So, anytime I was looking it up, it was an abdominal strain. It really depends on the severity of the tear. So, if it's a minor tear, you know, they'll call it either grade one, two, or three. So, grade one is more of a small tear. That's usually that two week range. Usually in two weeks of rest, you're back, you're back up and running. But depending on how severe that grade gets, now we're adding more weeks. So if it's anywhere in the grade two and three, it can be anywhere from like six to even 10 weeks, depending how severe it is. Now, from what I heard, they said it was more on the minor side. So I'm guessing probably for LeBron, you know, he's still in peak condition, even though, you know, father time is catching up to him. I would probably say another f- probably four weeks on the high end, if I had Ooh. to guess, based on kind of what they had recommended um, from his from his injury. And plus, they're going to take a, their time bringing him back. They have no reason to rush LeBron back until playoffs. And as a Laker fan, let's 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 rest the big guy <laughs> when <laughs> April comes then he can open up, open up the floodgates. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, great assessment because, you know, um, 
you know, the Lakers did win. I think they're now six and five uh, for the season. As of today, that might change next week when this comes out. But, you know, um, Carmelo is balling out. Um, he has been a great surprise. Um, dropping 20, a uh, high score uh, since LeBron has been out. And he's off the bench. So mm -hmm. it's really great to see him perform and do what he's doing um but who knows like who knows when all the when i know tht is out i think he's coming back they said this week so i listen i listen despite what westbrook has been doing i'm like the lakers are still contenders to me okay because they have lebron so um and, and guys laker fans i've been telling y'all if y'all not if y'all make it to the finals it's a bus like i expect y'all to make it to the finals if you guys don't do it it's a bus for me because there's no reason why with that squad you have like four four top 75 players on your, on your team four for him your thoughts yeah. <laughs> um yeah stacked um i do have a question for mr or dr b real quick okay watch this i'm thinking ad as we know, uh, well, as <laughs> now that you, you call them street clothes. Street clothes. Right? Hey, Fun yes. Barkley, Fun Barkley. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as the season goes on, like so far I heard he had some kind of, just a minor, typical AD type injury, right? His um, finger, what, I think, was the last one he, I Was the finger? Okay. <laughs> so what, uh, what do you think the odds are in this year that come playoffs, uh, I understand no one's 100% at the playoffs, um, but what what do you think the odds are that he was he's healthy enough to make an impact um, this postseason for the Lakers? For AD, and uh, I'll take it for the whole squad, if I was in Laker management, mm -hmm. we are on load management mode for everybody. Mm -hmm. The only person I trust playing 82 games consistently is probably Russ. Mm -hmm. um, as far as LeBron and AD, I would recommend them resting up periodically um you know this season is going to be a little different than last season you know i think last season they really tried to congest the 72 games into like five six months this is more like your typical nba season so there'll be less back to back i think that plays a role a lot of times with the injuries some of these mm -hmm. players are getting because it's no it's no longer like contact injuries it's more like overuse type injuries they've been getting um the last couple of seasons so I think with the lengthened season, being more wise about load management, I think with the depth they have on the Lakers roster, nobody needs to be playing 40 minutes and being a hero. Everyone could pay, play like 30, 35 minutes. Um, I think that will minimize AD, LeBron, and some of the other stars from getting injuries. Mm -hmm. And once they once they get, get right for playoffs, oh, and for you, Janelle, championship nothing oh. below championship okay okay hey <laughs> hey i've heard i've heard that i've heard final of her championship i just think that if you're gonna have a if you're gonna have four people on the top 75 list y'all gotta i got no excuse so oh, absolutely. <clears throat> That's all I say. well so yeah. it's a good thing good thing you just mentioned lists um, <laughs> let's go to the highest paid athletes of all time lists. Ooh, they have that list, yo? That's wicked. Yes, they do. Okay. Um, I'm going to go through very quickly. Uh, there's only maybe 10 here. I think they have top 10 here. Um, some interesting names, some current, some not, but let me go through real quick. Okay. So we had, we had Jordan with 2.6. By, by the way, everything I mentioned is going to be, these are all billionaires, like <laughs> billies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with the beat okay um so here we go uh jordan at uh, 2.6 tiger woods 2.1 arnold palmer 1.5 jack nicholas 1.3 cristiano ronaldo 1.2 floyd 1.2 lebron 1.1 messi 1.1 michael schumacher 1.1 Three, okay, and then uh, Roger Federer, 1.12, Phil uh, Mickelson, uh, one, and David Beckham, one. So, um, yeah, this is a billionaire, billionaire club right here. And um, how many of them are active? We have Ronaldo, who's fifth yeah. at 1.2. He's active. We have LeBron James, who's mm -hmm. seventh, who's with 1.17. He's active. Messi, 1.14. 
Federer 1.12. So I mean, Tiger was this, he's injured, but I mean, is he like he's not retired yet? So even though he's not playing, I won't say that he's he's active because he's not okay. retired. If that makes sense, you know what I mean? So I'll give him a little ask, a little no. star, a little bullet. <laughs> no, no, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, this is of all time. Um, as we know, uh, these are inflation ad adjusted earnings, so um, it's all relevant, I guess, to the time we're in. But um, yeah, it's pretty impressive that we have these these athletes, uh, billionaires, and a lot of them with their portfolio. When I think, um, obviously, it's not just this is not just money that they earned in the sport, but outside the sport. What's your thoughts on this, guys? Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, so that was, that was going to be my first question. I'm sure most of these athletes are making their money outside of the sport. Mm -hmm. So these are guys who really invested in other businesses buying other teams, endorsements, you know, they've really expanded their portfolio and their brand nationally to really get to these levels. So for the young and upcoming folks, you, you got to find different streams of income. Even, even the professional athletes making millions are creating other streams of income. So that, that's um, my, that's my sorry, thought. Sorry, Dr. B, that was making billions <laughs> yes. with a V. Yeah. First of all, I just want to say we got two brothers, them one and two. Who we? I'm loving that. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna claim Tiger Woods. Yeah, Tiger. I'm gonna claim you to the black. To the I'm gonna claim you. Okay. I'm gonna claim Tiger Woods and my, Michael Jordan. Chocolate, chocolate king, goat, MJ, bulls with the red, black, and white. Like this to me is beautiful to see uh, because I can say ten years ago uh, we weren't topping this list. Because Jordan became a billionaire in the last decade uh, with, you know, with the Jordan brand booming up, what Nike pays him on uh, top of what he's done with his moves that he's done outside of Nike. Because um, he's a production company, he does different things, he owns liquor, he's do like, I mean, he bought a team, like, come on, like. MJ is doing the damn thing. Um, and so it's really, it's really motivating for me because I've really like, um, Ben's Kobe is my MJ. I've always admired MJ and I've been like, yo, he's always just going, like MJ wants to be the greatest, great at everything. If it's not basketball, it's money. If it ain't money, like he wants to be the best in everything he does. Like you can't, you can't fake that type of personality type where no matter what you're doing, you have to be number one. <laughs> That's, <laughs> and MJ moves that way. And you know what? If Kobe was alive, but rest his soul, I'm sure he'd be on there as well. Cause Kobe was, yeah. was going, was getting to a lot of things uh, before he passed away, like a lot mm -hmm. of things. So like his book deals and stuff for, for, for production, like he was going to a lot of stuff. So Again, yep. very, very excited for this list. Um, congrats to Messi. And, you know, um, so I saw that there's mostly, I think there's, you said there's three basketball, there's two NBA players, two golfers. I heard a, a driver. Uh, um, no, actually, there's three or four golfers. Right? There's four golfers. Oh, four golfers. Oh, that's right. Because Tiger. Right. So um, we go Tiger, Palmer, Palmer, Palmer Nicholson, Jack Nicholas, Nicholas, Nicholas yep. mm -hmm. and Phil Mickelson. So it's like four golfers, almost yeah. half of them. And that, that's the point. There's I was a gonna, lot of money. In golf. I was going to say, so I'm like, there's four money. golfers. I, that's the most, I think, um, sport, right? On that list. So it just shows you For how sure. much money is in golfing. Damn. And, it's, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's not, it's not winning. It's probably more golf courses that they own. Mm -hmm. and country mm -hmm. club money mm -hmm. <laughs> showing up in that. <laughs> in that mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. remember investments too, right? Probably making really good investments because remember oh, yeah. they're in those they're in, they're in those spaces, so they're meeting people that right. can help them make more money. So yeah, I'm like, wow. Yeah. So, so shout yeah. out to the the golfers out that list. Damn. Okay. That that's the biggest surprise for me to see uh, four golfers, like pretty much half of them, are dominating, and all of them in their own right are legends, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, shout out. Shout out to them for sure. I was actually, it's nice to see Beckham there. I know he's the bottom list at just uh, 1 billion. I say just 1 billion. But what, um, what number is he at? He's like just 1 billion. Uh, like, I, think, yo, I, I, I can't even smell a billion, dog. Like, I can't even smell that. I can't even smell that, dog. But just 1 billion. <laughs> just 1 billion. Yeah. He was, I think, number 10 on the list, right? So, um, but shout out to David Beckham, actually, with uh, Inter Miami, his MLS uh, team that he owns. Um, it's great to see that he's a legend. Uh, doing it on the field and also off the field, continue on in that same vein also. So, yeah. Um, yeah. 
nice to see. That is honestly, and sorry, how many? Um, also, it's only one driver, so yeah. hopefully, we'll see, hopefully, we'll see Lewis Hamilton on there because he's making lots of right. investments too. So hopefully, sure. in a couple of years, yeah, for sure. So I'm really for impressed sure. with all the the um, athletes who are still in their sport on this list. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Usually, it yep. takes a couple of years to get to that billion status, but they're they're getting there. And they're still playing. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, DJ, let's go to For the Culture. For the Culture. We like to highlight individuals for the culture. And today, we're going to highlight a legend, an actual Hall of Famer. Um, growing up, I still watched this man play baseball, and um, he must not be a traitor to anybody. We got to big it up to Kenny. Griffey Jr. Right. So, the seats the Seattle Mariners on Monday this week announced, sorry, not this week, but last October, uh, last month, they announced that the Hall of Famer and franchise legend, Mr. Kenny Griffey Jr., has joined the club's ownership group. Um, this investment makes him the first former player to hold partnership interest in the Mariners. Um, but we don't know how big the stake of this uh, of the team he owns. But this is amazing, y'all. Your thoughts on this, guys? Dr. B? Uh, well, I'll, I'll start. I'm a huge Ken Griffey fan growing up. So <laughs> the fact that I always wanted, like, MJ to really be an owner of the Bulls. Like, Ken Griffey being an owner of Seattle, like a team that he helped let's be honest, build, I Talk think is an it. amazing, amazing accomplishment. Um, big moves for him. Congratulations to him. You know, first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt, I'm sure. Uh, so that, that's, that's what I think. I think it's just this awesome to see, like, guys who built their teams. Like, I'd like to see LeBron one day come back and be the owner of Cleveland or mm -hmm. um, things like that I think would be awesome to watch. And, and I want to add to what you said, Ben. So folks will understand, right? There's only right now, there are only six minority owners um, in pro sports. Yes, six. That's it. Six. So um, so what, what, of course, is Michael Jordan. Everyone knows him, right? The Hornets. Um, mm -hmm. But he also owns NASCAR team as well. So, you know, MJ, $2 billion, Makes sense. Um, we have Shahid Khan. For the Jackson Jaguars. That's right, y'all. He's mm -hmm. Pakistani born and he owns the Jackson Jaguars. He's a minority order in the NFL. Sorry, a, a, a minority person in the NFL that owns the team. The third owner that people don't know is, which I just found out, uh, Sacramento Kings. Vivek, oh, yeah. uh, right. Indian American right. executive, mm -hmm. Vivek, and I won't say his name, but Ran da Rana Dive, Dave. He's also an owner of that team, did not know. Again, Kim Pagula of the Bills and Buffalo Sabres. That's right. This Korean-American businesswoman, she, she is an owner of the Buffalo Bills and the Buffalo Sabres. Guys, I did not know. I did not know. And then Arte Moreno of the Los Angeles Angels is also a minority owner. He's Latina, Vietnam. Uh, again, did not know. Veteran. And then last but not least, we have Mark Lassery of the Bucks. He's also a minority owner. So um, there's only six, and I'm not sure how big of a stake Kenny Griffith Jr. has, but the key is to get into one, right? Get into one, mm -hmm. and maybe you can grow in that ownership. But I'm just saying that I didn't know there were six minority owners. I had no idea. But seeing, like, Dwayne Wade join ownership groups and Shaq, and mm -hmm. it's, it's going to create this action of having more people because more of us owning these teams means more change. So shout out to all those owners on top of Kenny Griffey Jr. Fahim, your thoughts on this, man? Right. So, so you, you mentioned uh, Dwayne Wade uh, in Utah yep. and Shaq for Sacramento, just in contact for people who did, maybe didn't know where they were yes, at. True. Um, I do want to say, so remember A-Rod? He mm. was him and his ownership group. <laughs> what team was that? That was... Minnesota. Minnesota, right. And I remember when he was in the bid for Minnesota, actually saying, you know what, it would have made have been a better organic fit 
if A-Rod were to own part of the Mariners because of the fact yeah, that he yeah. spent his early times there. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though that was, a, I guess, an opportunity missed with, with A-Rod going to, uh, doing in Minnesota, uh, I think it's definitely made up for it. And I think even a better brand fit to have Ken Griffey um, in Seattle as a partial owner, even more than A-Rod. So um, minority uh, and also a legend uh, where he made his name, uh, you know, this is just, it's a great feel good story. I just, so on, on the lot, way out, I just want to ask, uh, take a guess, the average Major League Baseball franchise, how much do you think it goes for? And I'll help you. It's, it, I guess the theme is bees with the billies. Well, so, it's, it, right? so, so I know the Maple Leafs is the most, ex, most uh, expensive franchise. They're, they're worth $2 billion. That's the highest for hockey. So you're saying the average team? In MLB or the highest paid team, the highest worth team? What do you mean? Yeah, just the average. Um, I would no, say probably the average. I would say like probably two to four billion. I'll say billions. Yeah, I'll say two to four. All right, Dr. B? Yeah, I'm trying to think of. I'd probably say I'd probably be in the same range as Nelly J. I'd All say right. like four billion. Four billion? Okay. Four. Mm-hmm. Okay, you said four. Okay. So um, yeah, you're both close. Uh, so it's uh, to add, the average is 2.2. Okay. And uh, the highest is obviously team, the hi- right? The Yanks. And mm-hmm. yes, give, me, give me a figure, Dr. B, on the, and the Yankees. Oh, Yankees, I'm going 10. That's no, it's a little high, a little high, a little high. Uh, 6.7, <laughs> so almost 6. 7. Right, right, right. So, yeah, it's good to see, like I said, minorities um, have an opportunity in today's uh, landscape to, to grow and um, inspire others, you know, so – Shout out, definitely, with Ken Griffey with this one. Yeah, yeah. And, again, did you guys know that Kim Peruga was owning, like, she was the owner for the for Buffalo's teams? I, I, I had no clue. So Yeah, I had heard something on the offseason about that. I just found out just, just past offseason. Okay, sure okay. Why. Um, yeah. Actually, it's, I think maybe Kevin Weeks might have mentioned her, I think, for some reason. Yeah, well I, well, I know, well, actually, there's someone else, so... Um, oh, okay. The first, yeah, there was a woman who is the MLB GM. Um, mm-hmm. That was the first. Um, but yeah, um, for, to her, for her own two teams in Buffalo, Sabres and, I mean, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's again, it's, like, it's uh, the more we see people of color, people of different yeah. ethnic backgrounds, people um, that look like us in these positions is how we can make change. You know, not everyone can just, everyone has their, their role to play. In, in this game of equality, we have our starting five, we have our bench players, we have the guys that got, got to make the buzzer shot, guys who just got to pass and rebound. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone got to play their the position. Role. Right. Everyone has a role. So, mm-hmm. shout out, y'all. So, Kenny Griffey Jr., congrats, brother. You are mm-hmm. part of ownership. You're back in Seattle. And I'm hoping Seattle gets some other teams like NBA. I know people are talking about that as well. But I think Vegas will get the first bid, to be honest, because. All their teams are looking yeah. very good. <laughs> very right. good. Very good in Vegas. And that stadium, beautiful. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so again, thanks, y'all. So, we're going to end this segment, and let's go to the last one for him. All right. So, let's go to That's Absurd. That's Absurd for him, bro. What was absurd this week? What was absurd? Carl Anthony Towns. Cat, cat. Cat. <laughs> On Twitter, he had liked a comment that he later had said that he didn't like and his account was hacked. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so, this wasn't even a post, this was just a like? Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're telling me someone hacked his account to like one post and then they <laughs> gave him back the account. <laughs> Stop this, Raheem. Absurd. Absurd. Yes. Yes. Dr. B, your thoughts on this? Like, I, I want to know what, what he liked that he was saying that he got hacked about. <laughs> I need more details. <laughs> um, hold on. Here we go. Let me... The fact yeah. that it, you can't unlike on Twitter. You can't like on it. You can't. You can't unlike. I mean, you can't unlike, but it's too late. Once it's liked, it's like people can people screenshot, right, guys? People screenshots, see that, right? Okay. Yes. 
Well, so. I, I find that very interesting, to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a hashtag. It says free cat within a Twitter account that is, was apparently uh, hacked. Um, so with cat, I mean, it, why it would seem kind of believable would be he's, oh, he, as long as he's been in Minnesota, um, he's hasn't really, his team hasn't really achieved very much. Mm -hmm. And I think his, his play is bigger than the results he's getting from his team. Um, I actually see Cat much like I used to see DeMarcus Cousins pre-injury. When DeMarcus Cousins was in Sacramento, he was, at one point, I remember I would have discussions saying he's the best center in the league at one point for a few, few years or before the injury while in Sacramento. Um, and it took him getting act out of Sacramento to uh, actually appreciate what he brings to the table, but unfortunately the injury happened. Mm -hmm. Cat is, to me, kind of like DeMarcus Cousins prior to the injury where like he's a great player um but even when he, if we were to ask you know who's the top centers in the league he is one of them but maybe because the market he's in he doesn't really get that notoriety as the ones that comes to mind like maybe Gobert or, or joker or Embiid. so that's why i think it's kind of, you know it's kind of absurd that you know uh maybe that his account got hacked and like something about him leaving but you know where the smoke is fire and even if he didn't um, that's kind of the narrative that's happening with him. Yeah. Um, I, I, don't, I don't blame him. I would, I would want to leave Minnesota <laughs> team. I don't think they've really accomplished much. Now they, they got a young squad, so they're, they're on the come up now. Um, I, I really like that two guard. I, I forgot his Anthony name. Anthony right? Edwards. Anthony, Anthony Edwards. Edwards. Right. I like mm -hmm. that kid. Um, right. So they're, they're on the come up, but. I really think for, for him to blossom, he probably needs to be in a bigger market. Um, you know, I think he's from New Jersey, New York area. I feel like somewhere on the East Coast probably might be a better fit for him just from mm -hmm. where he grew up from that standpoint. But, um, yeah, it is absurd that somebody would just, like, hack your account to just put, like, and not put some kind of absurd post and then... <laughs> <laughs> well this is my thing right this is my mm -hmm. thing you know i look at the the deeper meaning behind all this foolishness because <laughs> first of all why would someone hack your account only to like one tweet one tweet that not make no sense cash <laughs> that makes no sense number one number two you respond saying sorry i didn't mean to cause any hysteria to the fans yeah i did because i like the bomber clock tweet i like the tweet cat stop lying with the ting stop yes. lying with the ting you probably were sipping on some scissor probably smoking on some smoking on some, some some trees and you're like yo this is a true thing you liked it you probably didn't know you liked it until the next day bro stop lying no one hacked your account cat cat you're not really that interesting bro you're not really that interesting who's hacking your account for what like, we know you're dating Jordan Woods, okay? That, like, what, what about Kat does to have to hack your account for? And that makes no sense, Kat. You're not that guy. If you're Kevin Durant, Kyrie, certain people, I get it. Kat, what? who's hacking Kat? Guys, this is absurd. <laughs> Number two, if I was his agent, I'd be like, yo, like it and then unlike it to kind of get people thinking about, hmm, is Cat happy there? Is he a trading piece? Yes. They have Anthony Edwards. What? To me, if I'm his agent, I'm going to advise him to do that stuff because I want people to think, put it in their brain now that Cat should leave. He's older. They have Anthony Edwards now. So I want to create that narrative now, which has happened. I've seen enough mock, mock trades for Cat the last couple of days now because of, of this liking tweet. So I think it was planned. And it's strategic, but it's absurd because you thought we were that stupid. You thought we couldn't understand that you weren't hacked. <laughs> absurd. <laughs> absurd. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, that sounds like a good scheme. I could see a, 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 a agent. Hey, hack. Cat, just say you got hacked. <laughs> Let's get this out in the media. Let's Woo! make some noise. Let's start some drama. See if we mm. can get get some trades going before this deadline in February. Hello, Ben. Hello. Free cat. <laughs> Hashtag free cat. 
<laughs> on the way out, uh, where do you rank Cat? Just a ballpark. Not going to really hold you to it, but where do you rank him in regards to centers in the league right now? He's my top five. Top five? Uh, centers in the league. Yeah. I don't feel like there's that many. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Joker mm-hmm. comes to mind. Embiid. Uh, Embiid. Uh, and, th- and then there's the rest. I'm trying yeah, to Joker, I guess Joker, yeah, but yeah, so yeah, he Joker would be and, uh, Bede, and then the rest, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, like, there like, might be up there, but mm-hmm. yeah, might. like I like Steve Adams mm-hmm. maybe up there. Um, but Cat yeah, is Kat, like top, be top five, yeah, he's, he's top five, he's nice. top five. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's I think, more eight, versatile. yeah, Cat, listen, Cat. Listen, if he was on any other team, he'd be great. I did see a mock draft mm-hmm. with um, the Raptors trading for Cat, and the mock draft that someone did was we're getting rid of Boucher, Precious, Gorin, please go, and um, who's the other player? And then two second round picks for Cat. It was a pretty good trade, but yeah. well, but Masai wanted yeah, Precious. <laughs> but mm-hmm. but the upside is that Precious is young, right? Everyone's young, pretty much. Precious is young. Boucher has potential to grow, right? And that's a four and a five right there combo, a future four or five, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then they're going to get on top of that Gorin, which is a vet, a vet point guard, which you want. Right. So, I mean, it's a mock draft, but um, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if Masai would want Kat because Kat is yeah. girlfriend of Jordan Woods and she wants Hollywood. I think mm-hmm. she wants to come to see, see her man in Canada. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. he comes, Tor- Toronto, he ain't coming up here, y'all. He ain't coming up here. But I just wonder if he's just in Minnesota kind of wasting some good years uh, we did mention anthony edwards um he also has De- d'angelo russell also and russell True. is his buddy from back so i mean they're trying you know one thing i could say about minnesota is they're always throwing something at the window trying to see what sticks you know they've made they made that mm-hmm. big move for jimmy butler it didn't happen to work out uh you know got rid of zach levine uh got rid of wiggins like th- that's a that's a, a franchise it's always in movement of trying something, yeah. just having no luck. But so, imagine they kept those players, though. It's that yeah. small yeah. market, too. It's hard to keep stars right. in a market like that. So Definitely. And I being, agree. And being, being in Toronto, we can, uh, we can definitely. Yeah, yeah. So th- I, would, I would try to trade him for some first-round picks, try to get some, get a little bit younger with Anthony Edwards. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but you know what? They always get good time, tech. Mm-hmm. Ben, but like they always ha- get good talent there, but they leave. Like they had Zach Levine, yeah. they had Wiggins, yeah. they had mm-hmm. uh R- Ricky Rubio, they had mm-hmm. um who was it? They have Butler. You know what I mean? When mm-hmm. Butler embarrassed them, they mm-hmm. have. Imagine they kept that core that they had years ago. A lot. You know what I'm saying? So it just shows like Zach's mm-hmm. a contender now. Mm-hmm. Butler yeah. a contender now. You know what I'm saying? Like they've all moved on and gone to better situations. The cat had stayed there for what? Like, bro, I advise you. With their and agent, Cat has to do the same. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Think, yeah, that's the, exactly. the challenge is keeping them there. So, right. I think Minnesota's done a good job trading before before it's too late, where you yep. have nothing for them. Yeah. Right. Right. I was I was gonna say once upon a time they traded somebody to Boston Celtics, um, a couple of years back. I could I could totally see Cat going over there with, playing with some of those Ooh. boys in Boston. Too. Oh, you're talking KG. KG. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> but what's funny is that I saw that um, Ben Simmons and Jalen Brown might do it. Like, like I think Philly might do, tra- uh, might do a trade with Boston. Yeah, with like, there's, there's so many rumors right now because, you know, Jalen Brown's off for two weeks too. So, yeah. Well, oh, I guess we'll close this out. But what I will say is, you know what? Um, I can I can approve and like that tweet. So I say free cat, free cat, <laughs> free cat. Free cat. But, bro, it's absurd that you say you got hacked, bro. No one oh, believes you. Definitely. Hey, just, hey, just, just hey. like it. I liked it. <laughs> hey, hey, cat. Hey, cat. Guess what? Own Guess up. what? No one believes you. No one believes you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Okay. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right. So, now oh Jay, let's put this episode in the books. Y'all, that was episode 65. Six. Five, six, five. five. So y'all, five. yo, it was a vibe. Thank you, Dr. B, for being here. As you know, we'd like to give our special guest a chance to do a shout out. So the floor is yours. Oh, uh, well, first off, thank you. Good rookies for inviting me again. It's always fun chatting with you guys and, you know, love listening to your podcasts. Uh, you know, shout out the family. You know, they're lurking in the background, always in the pictures. Um, but family. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it, and continue continue to do what you guys do best, and 
bring more news for the culture. Thank you, Dr. B. My shout out is to you, the incredible father, brother, like everything, husband, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, like you, you, you got your MBA this year. Congrats. Big, big things on top of having your PhD. Like this guy is just always leveling up. So big up to you. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I appreciate it. My second shout out is a quick one. Cause I know I might talk about him in the future for him. Vladimir Guerrero Jr was named the American League Hank Aaron Award winner as the best offensive performer in the league, the youngest to ever win this honorary award. So big up, Vladdy Jr. Big up uno self. Mm -hmm. And I'm done. Oh, and all FYI, um, in the past, we've had other Blue Jays win it. Carlos Delgado won in 2000. Bautista won it twice. Back to back, 2010, 2011, and Josh Donaldson won it in 2015. So it just showed you that this kid's future oh, wow. is bright in Toronto. Definitely, yeah. definitely, For definitely. I'm gonna keep mine yeah. quick. Uh, Doctor B, uh, thanks for coming out. Always a pleasure. Um, I didn't know about the MBA and uh, the PhD. I knew about the PhD, but the MBA does not. That's recently, right? The MBA is recently. Yeah. So it's congratulations. Nice. Awesome. We, we love to hear that. Love to hear that. Um, second part, I just want to say, yeah, it's uh, good vi vibing with, uh, with the family, the two of you. And, uh, you know, my, I'm the outside looking in, but like, I'm pretty sure going back uh, to your younger years, you probably had many times of many debates and uh, many discussions. So this is a natural for you guys. So it's great to be a part of it. Oh man, the Igre household, you know, it was a thing, yo. Us three and Bernard and Gennard, oh man, it was a thing. <laughs> real talk, real talk, enough debates. <laughs> yep. But y'all, if you had a good time, you enjoyed yourself, please like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Fahim. You know where to look for us if you're finding us on all platforms, we're there for you. That's Good Rookies Podcast, it's episode 65. And we out. Peace. Peace.